So why might you choose to do, that was weird, why might you choose to do a PhD in um, Canada versus the United States or vice versa? So if you don't know me, I actually did a PhD in Canada. This is a question that Andes was asking. I wanted to answer that. So I did a PhD in in Canada and then I moved to the United States and now I live in the United States and I'm part of the whole academic system in the United States. And there's some really big differences between the two of them, but there's a lot of similarities between the two of them. And I kind of want to talk about at least a few um, that matter, right? So the Canadian system is actually quite small in terms of the academic um, system that they have. And, and a lot of people sort of share, there's a lot more community within the country across the different universities. So for example, you're kind of competing with people at uh, UBC, um, University of British Columbia, University of Toronto, Canada, or, or sorry, you know, um, uh, I went to the University of Western Ontario. You know, all of these are really good schools, but there's not a lot of actually universities in, in Canada. So they tend to work together a little bit more and there's a lot more communal sort of forces that happen within that particular area. Now, it's still a competition. It's still the same sort of academic game. There's still all this sort of nonsense where everybody is competing against each other for um, little resources, which is kind of silly. But, you know, all of the same sort of stuff that you'd experience is going on there. And now the structure for a PhD is very similar in that um, most of them kind of have like two years of coursework, uh, and then you're off and doing your research for X number of years. You know, it could be three, four, five years after that where you're doing research um, and kind of going at it. Now, a lot of um, uh, Canadians will end up doing postdocs in American schools. That's really, really common. And the reason is, I wanna talk about this, is that um, honestly, and I know that this sounds really bad and, and my Canadian friends are probably gonna be like, oh gosh, um, but you know, there is, it doesn't have the same brand recognition. So even if you go to the top schools in Canada, this is something I really realized, is that it doesn't have the same brand recognition outside of Canada. So I went to the top schools in Canada, or some of them anyways, they were really good schools, right? Um, the Ivy Business School was, is a good school. Everybody would recognize that in Canada um, as like, you know, one of the, the, the better schools that are there. Um, I went to the University of Waterloo for engineering in my undergrad, recognized, um, you know, it's it's like one of the only schools at Amazon. I think if you went to Amazon, it's like the number two hiring place from like many of the tech places, tech uh, business, you know, tech businesses will hire just from University of Waterloo and like MIT and, you know, Berkeley and stuff like that. So it's like really good school is what I'm saying. But outside of that sort of really tiny um, ecosystem, I still get all the time. It's like, uh huh, you know, I've never heard of that. Um, you know, what is this particular institution? Like, who cares? So you get that a lot. And I think, um, you know, unless you're there, so American schools have this sort of brand recognition because of the football teams. And they get a lot of that, or because what ends up happening is that if, if um, a lot of the super elite schools, the super prestigious schools, they pay a, a crap ton, right? So like Princeton or Harvard and all those kind of things, they pay a crap ton. So then they, they kind of siphon off um, all of the best researchers to go to those particular places. Now, um, you're gonna find great people everywhere, but it's kind of, the symbol of that you made it in academia. If you're at Princeton, for example, or you know, you're know you a professor, a full professor at Harvard, it's kind of like, oh, you made it, right? Like, um, So you get that siphoning off part of it, and then what ends up happening is that they get a lot of brand recognition. And then all of the other, many of the other institutions in the United States gets um, brand recognition because of their football teams. Right. And so it's the same process of sort of siphoning off. They recruit from all over the world to go play on these football um, teams and baseball teams and all that kind of stuff. So then they get brand recognition through the TV. Right. Um, and that plays that plays a role when you get out into the real world, unless you're in those little tiny ecosystems. 
So if I was in engineering right now and you know, I was talking about the University of Waterloo uh, and I was in like Silicon Valley, everybody would know what it was, right? Um, or if I went to the Ivy Business School, everybody would know what it, what it was, right? The Mr. Wonderful, you know, the guy that's on TV that everybody hates, the sort of business guru on Shark Tank, uh, he went to the Ivy Business School. So, you know, all of that kind of stuff, you have to recognize that they just don't have the recognition um, that they do in American schools. And it's unfortunate because there's outstanding, amazing people that are actually there doing great stuff. So that's that's the first thing to recognize. The other thing to recognize um, is that the sometimes the stipend, so that it's kind of a messy thing, right? So you do have generally um, better stipends there or better chances of getting scholarships and bursaries and because you've got um, you know a heck of a lot more granting agencies that are there. So you can get prestigious grants. I got a couple of them, um, not sort of you know bragging or anything like that, but that was a really big bonus of, of doing that. And they don't have that in American schools. However, and you might be looking at like, ooh, it's really expensive. However, a lot of times the, the uh, funding that you get at these institutions in America um, tend to be a lot higher because you're paying for healthcare um, and all these other kind of things. So it's actually quite high. And I'm like, holy cow, that's a lot of money that um, PhD students get in, in many of the American schools, um, including the one that I'm at. And, and I'm like, wow, you live quite good compared to, you know, just kind of, um, it's you're still living below the poverty line. I want that to be clear, but it's better um, at American schools, many American schools that are kind of, you know, that you would recognize uh, compared to the, the Canadian schools. However, the Canadian schools are still sort of comp competing, right? Um, and the other thing that you have to recognize is that both of them are, um, they're stellar, right? Like you cannot go wrong at many institutions as long as you can recognize the name and you're like, okay, I understand where it is, right? Like you you understand it, you get it. And if you could tell people about this particular place and they're like, I get it, I understand where you're going. Um, it's not some random place that nobody's ever heard of or some place that you've seen on the internet, you know, all of those kind of things. Um, you know, when somebody else gets it, that's actually pretty decent, right? And that's all that really matters. The other thing to remember is, you know, before going into all of that, right? Like those are really important things to think about. Um, the other thing to remember is that the community is small. So there are really good people in all places of the world that are doing amazing things, right? They, it doesn't really matter where you're going. It matters that if, if there is this really good cohort of people that are energized, having fun, doing good things and really pushing towards something. Um, that's what matters more than anything. And it just happens that um, the way that the incentive structure works at some of the, um, you know, some of the American schools, they they have a lot of that. However, you know, there is there's challenge though, right? Like the way that it works, because you're always under the gun, you're under the thumb, right? Like they're, they're pushing on you. There's lots of pressure to publish, to do research, to get going. Um, a lot of pressure, like it's vicious, like vicious, right? Um, but in in Canadian schools, there's a slightly, there's more collegiality that goes on, I think. There's still that viciousness, but there's still some um, more community that goes on, I think. But, but maybe I'm wrong. I think that that is like an important part that goes on. And you can see you get that feeling of, man, there's a lot of research productivity that's going on. Um, you have to really get a sense of what the community is actually like. And it's hard to build that. The culture and community and stuff are really stinking hard to build. Um, and it takes, it's, <laughs> excuse me, it's very subtle uh, in terms of when things can turn in a different way. So sometimes one institution is like on fire for whatever reason, and then it dies out, right? And this happens at every, all over the place, right? Like there is, it might be an institution, um, some university just becomes like really big for 10 years and then it dies out. And I've seen that multiple times in many different universities. 
um, where they're really big, they're like the hot thing that's going on and then it dies out because the culture just goes Pfft. So like that's an important thing. You have to get that qualitative feel when you go and visit and you sort of get a sense of that, of where it's going by that qualitative feel when you're there. And that's a hard thing to sort of figure out um, until you actually go there and um, you just look at people in their eyes, you look around. Um, and as I've been in this profession longer, I've been very be much more better looking around at looking at people's expressions and, and, and what's going on. That's what you gotta look for. You gotta look at those sort of subtle expressions on their face in terms of how they feel about things and what's going on. I think that those are the key things that's, that's gonna give you a lot more information than any sort of list of publications and all of this kind of stuff in terms of whether you should actually go there. Look to see, have conversations with them and see how, um, how they feel, what's going on, right? Like get that sense. And you have to get that sense that, yes, uh, we're really pushing and really doing great things, but at the same time, we're collegial, we, you know, are spreading a lot more love. Uh, and those are some key things. Oh, another thing that's, that's a different sort of atmosphere, and it depends on where you are, right? Like that's the key thing. And, and this is like, it, it's, it's everywhere. But if you can find a group of people that you can work with that can, um, you know, it depends who you are, right? So if you're very instrumental, find a group of people that just care about publications and they're just gonna push towards those publications, right? That's the only thing that matters, do it, go nuts. That's the currency, go nuts. Um, the other thing is, can you do good science? Are there people actually concerned about doing good science? And they can they can tell the rest of the world, screw you, I'm doing good science, and I'm gonna keep pushing at this. They can, if you can find a place like that, um, that's golden, but it's not gonna be the whole place, right? It's gonna be a couple of people that are really pushing towards something and have that sort of, I don't know, you just get a sense of, um, it's almost like nobility, right? <laughs> Like that's honestly it. It's a noble walk where you can you can you can walk towards something, and um, you can you can do it because of the fact that you actually are loving it, and you care about good science rather than caring about the performance metrics of it all. That is the secret sauce. Um, hard to find, really really hard to find. But if you can find that, and it doesn't matter what institution where you are, you're going to see some real differences. So hopefully this helps you out. A lot of differences in, in terms of, um, you know, between the United States and Canada in terms of sort of, um, you know, financial structure, for example, you don't care about healthcare in, in Canada. However, um, it's not necessarily true. Out of pocket healthcare is sometimes higher there than it is here um, in, in the US because of the fact you're paying for it. like the same thing, right? You're still paying for dental. Um, you know, things like that. But a lot of, most of the institutions, most of the universities provide good healthcare in Canada compared to the US. So that's something that, that you consider. Um, you know, really think about all sorts of these different factors in terms of what matters for you. And that's the key thing, is thinking about what matters for you and how it resonates for you and look for that. Um, I wouldn't look necessarily now looking back Yes, I would look for um, I would look for universities that have um, an amazing reputation, um, and it doesn't matter where it is, right around the world. The, oh, that's the other thing. One more key thing, and then I gotta let you go. One more key thing is you're not gonna live at the institution after, right? So think about the long term play. So often that's why people do like postdocs and stuff like that. They go do the long-term play. They go do a postdoc at um, UC Berkeley or something. And then they come back and then they work at an institution um, because it gives them that kind of like cachet. So think about the long-term play where you want to be in 20 years versus like what you're going to be doing right now. That's the most important thing. All right. Take care. Give me a thumbs up. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Bye.